Hello everyone and welcome to the next episode of the War on 0.1 series. I actually had like 20-30 minutes of footage shot before recording this, but that was pre-0.1 uh, announcement, so uh, yeah, I'm starting from scratch. Basically, you can see that I tore down my War 0.1 today. I also removed the heat from the heat bed, I'll get to why. And the thing I did, one of the major things that's still relevant is... You can see that I modified my Duet Wi-Fi with the terminals on the bottom side. I'm actually going to fix that now since the in the current version that is no longer necessary. And on the bed you can see that I removed the uh, Kinovo heater. It didn't come off without a fight. Uh, you can tell by the scratch marks but it's finally off there. And the reason I'm doing that is because I'm switching to a 24 volt DC heater instead of a 220 volt AC heater. The reason I'm doing that is not because of any safety concerns, but simply because I don't have to deal with an SSR with this setup. Uh, previously, A, I was using a Chinese SSR, which uh, I always had some problems trusting, and B, even if I did switch to a decent SSR, I still didn't really have much room to mount it. So, uh, yeah, I feel like a DC heater will work better for this setup, so that's what I want to do. And uh, yeah, that's why I will be switching to a Kinovo 24 volt heater, and it will be directly driven by the by the uh, Duet Wi-Fi. So uh, yeah, just like a usual 3D printer setup, I guess. A package from Kinovo arrived, and in that we get two heat pads, and this one is 100 by 100 millimeters. This is for the Voron Zero 24 volts, 100 watts. As I said previously, I'm switching to a DC bed on that one, so this is for that. And this one is for the Tiny M. It's 120 by 120 and 120 watts, but 24 volts again. And I actually talked Kinovo into listing this on AliExpress, so there are now uh, this is now an option on AliExpress. So if you didn't want to use a 100 by 100 millimeter heater on your 150 by 150 bed, now 120 and 120 is an option. And I'll link it in the description below because this is new. So. Uh, yeah, if you're interested in that, this is now definitely an option. And with these, as usual, we get our talisman of bed adhesion. But uh, unlike my previous two talisman of bed adhesions, this is now orange. So I don't know if this means it will adhere better or worse, but I guess we'll see when we get to testing it. They don't list the stats of the talisman, so who knows. But uh, anyway, I stuck down the heater from Kinovo to the Mandela Roseworks bed I had for the Voron Zero and I also applied some RTV, the same cheap crappy RTV I used on my Voron 2 for its bed. I used the same tube, so yeah, I, as I said, I have many tubes of that that I want to get rid of. I also used the same thing on the Tiny M bed as well, so once we get to building the Tiny M, which unfortunately might take a while because of the current state of the Voron 2, but uh, yeah, once we get to that, the bed is also now ready. But um, yeah, the beds have been drying for a while now. The first clip you saw was recorded in 1st of June. The second one was recorded in the 19th. So it's been a while, but today we will do a decent amount of the progress. So uh, anyway, let's move on. And I want to talk about some of the parts that I ordered from a laser cutting company that I also used for the Tiny M as well. I ordered all the Volon 0.1 panels from them and I'll show them in a second. But the first thing I want to show is these uh, knob trap replacements. These are um, obviously laser cut, they have 2mm holes, these are basically a replacement for the nut traps on the Volon Zero. I wasn't really a fan of those nut traps because, uh, for example, if you tighten the screw too much it just pulled the nut through, sometimes the nut rotated and it was useless, and once you were trying to insert the nut trap into the extrusion, a lot of the nuts fell down and... Uh, yeah, it was really annoying. I wasn't really a fan of that. So I wanted a replacement, but I also didn't want to add too much weight So I went with aluminium. So these are 1.5 millimeter thick aluminium uh, laser cut parts And as I said, they have the 2 millimeter holes that I tapped. I think they were 1.5 actually, but uh, yeah, I tapped them with an M2 tap So yeah, these will be the replacements for the nut traps. Hopefully it won't strip, but it's it is aluminium So I don't know how well it will last, but yeah, worst case scenario, I can uh, reorder these in stainless steel or something, and yeah, they should last. So, anyway, we will see them once we try to install them on the Voron 2. But yeah, this is what I want to use for this, and I will also release the DXF files of these in the description below if you're interested in that. But uh, moving on, let's take a look at the panels. And here are the panels for the Voron Zero. These are 3mm thick aluminium panels. If you remember uh, older episodes of the Voron Zero, I did something similar to this. I used 
Uh, three millimeter were thick aluminium sheets that I cut with my angle grinder as the panels of the War on Zero originally. I eventually replaced them with 3D printed panels because, well, I need the replacements and, well, cutting it was just too much work in my head, so... Yeah, this time though, I ordered them laser cut, so I didn't have to deal with that. But uh, you can see that there are a lot of scratches on these, so I will, again, have to deal with that. I'll have to sand these down so that they look decent, but, uh, yeah, let me just show you what each panel is. So this is the deck panel, you can see the motor mount here, the direct chain hole here, and just corners of that, which actually this goes into the extrusion, that's why I'm here. I modified it slightly for my current setup that I am planning to do, but it's pretty similar to that, just I had to adjust the whole locations, add a few holes. Similar with this, it's basically the stock setup with different holes, but I also had to get rid of two of the holes here as well, because, well, I'm not using the pocket watch anymore so there's no point in having those holes this is the bottom panel this is not spec this is something I designed but this is this is going to sit underneath the electronics chamber I maybe should have designed some ventilation for this I didn't think of that at the time but uh, yeah hexagonal cutouts would have probably looked good but uh, yeah this will be the bottom panel which will be underneath the power supply so again ventilation should, would have been good but the skirt should still breathe so I don't think this will be a problem and this is the rear panel. Again, I adjusted this slightly. So here is the cutout for where the power switch sit, uh, power input and the switch sits. And otherwise, it's basically the same thing. Again, could have done some ventilation, and I didn't. So anyway, this will still work pretty well. And this is the panel that sits between the A and B motor drives. This is so that the rear electronic chamber is separated from the inside chamber. This is something I did with mods on my previous War on Zero. It wasn't stock at the time, now it is. But uh, I don't think I'm going to use this for too long. I will definitely install this now, but um, eventually I'm definitely going to replace this because of a PCB project that uh, won't be in this episode, but should be happening fairly soon. I will basically have a PCB with a big connector here that will run to the tool head for a breakout. That's the idea. I sanded down the panels and just like with the Tiny M, I went from 42 120 to 180 grit and yeah, I think I got a pretty decent finish on these but unfortunately there were some scratches that I couldn't get rid of like this one and uh, this one will be in the rear so this one won't really be visible but still uh, I'd like to get rid of all of them and I couldn't but yeah still I think they turned out pretty well and uh, they're ready to be installed to the Boron Zero so uh, yeah, it's time to te finish tearing that down and starting the build. Only about a month after saying I was going to tear down the War on Zero, I've actually finally tore it down. I just had other stuff to do, that's why not that it took that long. But uh, yeah, you can see all the extrusions here. I uh, threw away all the plastic parts, but the MGN7 rails, the motors, everything else I'm going to reuse. And here are the new printed parts, and here is the new tool head. But uh, before I show them, one thing is, this is the reason I don't like those nut traps. Like You can see how deformed and ugly and, well, useless basically. You can see the how the nut tore down here or there are some holes where the, the, even the rear piece is missing, like here. So uh, yeah, this is why I don't like the nut traps, so that's why I might with that uh, aluminium plate solution. But uh, yeah, as I said, I tore down everything, so it's time to start assembling the War on Zero. I already assembled the tool head here as you can see it has a direct drive extruder this time so that's why it is taller and uh, yeah, it has a direct drive extruder based on the same NEMA 14 motor that we uh, use on the Galileo extruder on the Warren 2 as well uh, this motor and here are all, all the plastic parts I printed the black ones at least as I said I had a lot of problems printing these but um, yeah at least uh, most of the parts are ready here so I should be able to do a decent amount of progress but uh, there are a few parts you need when doing the upgrade from Boron 0.0 to 0.1 that uh, I ordered from China and there aren't here. There are some weird screws like the countersunk screws that you need for some reason and uh, they had more bearings because you're not really reusing the two tight levers anymore. A lot of people had problems with these two tight levers. I didn't but uh, based on that they changed their spec to using bearing stack like this as an idler. It's a smooth idler in this case as a result of this but uh, yeah as I said people had problems with the bearings exploding and stuff like that so it makes sense that they changed their mind on that but that means I need more bearings and 
I also need more washers, more screws, etc. So yeah, I'm still waiting for China. So I'm not going to be able to finish the assembly today, but I'll do a decent amount of it. I'm not going to cover every single step because this is not a tutorial and I feel like it would be really boring if I just went, okay, I attached this screw, okay, I did that. So I'll update you when I do something that's noteworthy that I feel like I should cover on camera. But other than that, I'll do the whole thing off camera. Wanted to show you how much these nut wrap replacements make your life easier. So as a demonstration, I'm going to install the, this MGN 7 rail on this 1515 extrusion. So one of the advantages of this is you don't have to deal with nuts, which means you don't also have to deal with them falling down, which means you can insert both of the both the MGN 7 rail and this at the same time to the extrusion, so you don't have to push this in from the side. And uh, it is pretty easy, you just make sure you these are aligned and in the correct hole, obviously, and then just uh, install one of the M2 screws, but not all the way, just enough that it starts threading in there, and there is a gap like this, and then just slide it in. It's that simple. And then you grab your center rail alignment things, uh, push them in, get your ruler to measure its distance from the edge. So um, in this case, I need to go 33 millimeters from here. So measure that. And uh, once you're at the correct distance, you just tighten that one screw. At the correct spot, and that's it really. So now you can install the rest of the screws. I like to do the opposite end. So here, I'm just insert the screw uh, and uh, screw it in. And once those two are in there, you get to do the rest of the ones that are in the inside and those are much, much easier because you don't risk sliding the MGN7 rail around. So it is this simple. You don't have to worry about uh, nuts pulling out of the nut traps or uh, not being able to align the both of the pieces or the nuts falling down, etc. This makes life much, much easier. And I already installed uh, two of these and I only stripped one. And that is much, much better than how I did with the nut trap. With the nut trap, I uh, used to just uh, lose more than half of the screw holes. So again, this is much, much better in this case. So I'm pretty happy with these. And the DXF files for these, as I said, since this is a success now, will be linked in the description below. If you're worried about stripping aluminum, because as I said, it can happen. I only stripped one of the one hole out of the two MGN 7s that I mounted, but it is possible. So. Uh, yeah, if you're worried about that, you can order these in stainless steel or whatever, but uh, yeah, in my case, aluminum will work just fine. So I'll continue doing the rest of these. I did the A and B motors and uh, most of the bed mechanism. The next step in the manual is to do the gantry, but for that, I need uh, four more bearings. And as I said, they're coming from China, so it will take a while, which means I can't do that in this episode. But um, yeah, I'm going to skip forward and do other stuff. The reason I'm recording right now is just to say that it's not a great idea to usually do that when doing the war on zero. It's just because of the nuts that you have to insert into the extrusions. If you skip around, you'll most likely miss some of the preloading. And with that, you're basically fucked. Basically, you have to disassemble what you did just to fix that. So, yeah, it's not a great idea. But in my case, uh, because the gantry is kind of independent from the rest of the build, I don't think that's going to matter. But... Yeah, just a general warning when building a war on zero. If you skip around, you're probably going to regret it. I was at the step of installing the feet and well, looks like I forgot to print one of the feet. So I only have three pieces. There is a feet with a Bowden tube that uh, failed. I was going to reprint that, but I guess it stayed in one of the reprint this G code files before my war on two died. So um, yeah, I can't print that. And unfortunately, I can't install three new feet and one old feet either. So, uh, because if we look at this, you can see that the new feet is just a slight bit taller than the old feet that I have. This isn't the old stock feet. This is hard case mode. He made uh, taller feet. And uh, yeah, this is the newer ones are even slightly taller than that. And uh, yeah, obviously, as a result of this, I can't use the new feet either. So uh, that's one of the first things that I will print once I get the warranty running. But uh, yeah, for now, I'll use the old ones. More updates on the feet. I mounted the uh, power side uh, feet just for a test fit here. So this is the new one. 
and well um, you can see that that is actually shorter than the power socket mount so uh, the way I designed the bottom panel is normally uh, the feet will come up until the panel and then it will sit between the feet and the rubber feet itself so it will be in between so um, as a result of this I should have obviously checked this but I didn't I need to make the feet a bit taller as well without those bearings what I can do is fairly limited so I decided to do the electronics so um, yeah here it is I did as much as I can without the uh, tool head and the stuff that goes on there so power supply and with Voron 0.1 there's also a power supply cover which is nice because otherwise mains is exposed there and well that's definitely a safety risk and the power to that runs from this power socket here and it's fused and has a power switch I'm not using the exact spec bomb one the spec one is has actually two poles for the power switch mine has one so so I'm switching it on the live side but we use the European plugs here so you can actually plug them in both ways so uh, yeah, this is not actually ideal, but uh, it will do the job. I mean, it's it's still fine anyway as long as it cuts the power then the printer doesn't work That's all I really care about. So anyway, it runs through to the, the power supply and from the power supply a pair of wires run to the duet Wi-Fi here So again, I'm reusing my duet Wi-Fi and another pair is here. It will run to the PCB that will sit here I already showed the prototype of this and now I'm very close to ordering it. In fact, I was just about to hit the order now button, but one of the components went out of stock again. Uh, not surprising in 2021, but definitely annoying. So I'll have to replace that power supply with another one. And uh, yeah, hopefully I will be able to order it after that. But uh, yeah, here we have the bed cables, so the thermistor and the power. And as I said, I'm switching to DC, so it's not directly connected here. I don't have to deal with an SSR. The Duet Wi-Fi is more than powerful enough to handle a 100 watt DC bed heater. It can handle much more than that even. So um, yeah, the AMB motors, the X, uh, Y and Z limit switches are wired to the Duet here. And now I also populated uh, a daughter board here. Uh, I already had this from way back in the day. I just wasn't using it. This is a PT100 daughter board. It has two Max31865s on it, so I can connect two PT100 sensors, and that's the plan. And uh, the Duet Wi-Fi, it won't run uh, RepRap firmware. It will run Clipper, so it is connected to the Raspberry Pi here through that USB cable. And uh, this is an old Raspberry Pi 3 that I have. I'm actually not sure what I have on that SD card, so I'll create a fresh install if that isn't uh, a correct profile for the Voron Zero. I might as well switch back to Octoprint anyway. I wasn't too happy with main sale, and I already went into the reasons why in a, why I still use Octoprint video. So, if you want more details on that, you can watch that. But it basically comes down to plugins. And uh, as I said, this piece will be replaced by the PCB, and this will also be gone. And you'll notice that there is no buck converter here. The buck converter will be built into this. So it's for the Raspberry Pi, if you don't know what I'm talking about. So the 5 volt for the Raspberry Pi will be generated on this board. And I'll run that here. And it will also be a breakout. So everything from here will run to the Duet Wi-Fi. And uh, the power, obviously, as I said, from the bed, uh, from the power supply. So, um, yeah, this is as much as I... So this is as much progress as I can make unfortunately as I said without those bearings I can't do the gantry and without the gantry uh, Well, I did everything else basically so this is all I can do for now I still hope you enjoyed this episode if you did please leave me a like down below and stay tuned for the next one The parts I mentioned were ordered like over a week ago, so they should be here fairly soon So it shouldn't take that long for me to get this thing working But um, yeah, I guess we'll see you never know but uh, as I said that's it for this video. So thanks for watching